Curex. Yeah, he's being detained right now for Curex. No, I'm talking to her next. I know. I know. I know. After being illegally held and arrested by the Miami Police Department, Samuel Scott Jr. found himself in a scenario that was both confusing and unsettling for him to deal with. The experience started when he made the first contact to report that his own vehicle had been stolen. When the cops confronted him, they questioned him about the location of his children and the fact that he possessed two identification cards. An aggressive white female unknown weapons wearing a white shirt with jeans making threats to harm herself. I think you have the intro on the 17th Street side, 1850, Show me today. One more call from the weapons. Yes, I'm in my. Pero que? Tu eres un sargento? Okay, yo tengo mi sargento. Alright? Okay? This led to confusion among everyone there. In the midst of the turmoil, Samuel frantically sought clarification on his rights and repeatedly highlighted that he could confirm his alibi. Four, three, two, two. I'm, I'm being arrested. Right now. Why am I being arrested? I'm going to explain to you in a minute. 4221, right? Where's your ID? Right there. You're going to take all your stuff? We can't take this? So this? Where's, um, can you come? What about my kids? I mean, I, I, I literally, I went over there to see my kids and everything. My kids are... Where are your kids? I was with them. <laughs> Where are they? They're over there. What's the name? They're over at my cousin's house. So, when? Huh? When? What? I've been over there since... What? I want to say at least 5, what? 5.30, 6 o'clock? I, I actually okay. walked back over here. You have two IDs? Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Well, one is an ID and one is a driver's license. Samuel was convinced that he was innocent of the crime. He stated that before notifying the authorities, he logged out of the Virtual Private Network, or VPN, provided by his employer. Samuel was vehement in his denial of guilt and insistence that he was not the one who had committed the offense that was the subject of their investigation. Are you going to take this? Is there something or am I going to take this? Uh, you can the tape. Uh -huh. okay. we'll get the story together. I'll let you know what's up, okay? All right, but... Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. You I really don't know the bigger space. What I did. I really don't care, but. Alright, okay. right, listen. I'm gonna read you your rights real quick. Alright? I'm telling you guys that oh, God, I can confirm where I was and I can even confirm my activities. I recently logged off of the VPN at my job. Okay. At what time? Roughly before I came over here, before I called you guys. Okay. But I'm telling you. You guys got the wrong guy. Okay. The description of the car, of the guy that took off from your car is just like yours. But that's half of Miami. Bald headed with a beard. Uh, even if he had dreads, it dreads with a beard. Okay. But then that's it's not. I mean, like like I said, my kids. I called because my car got stolen. In spite of his efforts to the express his rights and establish alibis, the police placed him in a SWAT car for further questioning. Despite his protests, I really just jumped out of the car to go see. That's it. If you want, like I said, we can go. Like, I had my kids and stuff like that. Dropped them off. Came over to, to say hi. And I went, I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't. I mean, like I said, I know the people that stay across there, over here, all over the place. I don't know what happened. My car just, somebody jumped in, drove off. And I'm sorry, but I'm telling you, I didn't, I didn't do it. I mean, literally, I, I mean, why would I call the police? <laughs> I mean, I called because my car is stolen. I mean, I, how me and my kids are going to get home? My pillow, my, my work ID, my work stuff, all of that stuff is in there. Why would I? That's why I'm like, what? what's, why am I in handcuffs? If I'm calling them and, and, and I'm. All right, just give me a second. You've never been arrested before? No. You sure about that? Yeah. Samuel was arrested as a result of a case of mistaken identity because the appearance of the suspect wanted in connection with the theft of the car matched Samuel's appearance. He was left in a state of misery as a result of the incident, having to deal with the unfair repercussions of a misunderstanding that had snowballed out of control. 
Scott was put into a difficult predicament as a result of a puzzling and unpleasant incident in which his automobile was stolen while he was visiting his children. What's the last for your social? Although Scott was unable to determine the exact moment that the theft occurred, he estimated that it occurred at about 5 o'clock. He had hastily exited his truck in order to see his children, but he had no idea what would transpire in the immediate moments that followed. Scott angrily denied any involvement in the theft, claiming that he had no cause to take his own automobile and that he had every motivation to do the right thing. He had phoned the police as soon as he realized that his automobile had been stolen, not to report a made-up crime, but rather to retrieve the stolen goods from the person who had taken it. When officers from the Miami Police Department arrived at the scene, they immediately placed Scott in handcuffs and acted as if he were the offender rather than the victim of the incident. The officers accused Scott of many charges, including fleeing the scene of the accident, falsely reporting a crime, and possessing drugs, despite Scott's protest of innocence and his past in the military. However, in November of 2021, the Office of the State Attorney for Miami-Dade County decided to drop all of these allegations. In light of the fact that he was unfairly arrested and that the event he went through was traumatic, Scott made the decision to pursue legal action against the Miami Police Agency. He filed a lawsuit against the department and five officers for damages totaling $500,000, seeking justice for an occurrence that had wrongfully implicated him and traumatized him. In the midst of a string of disastrous occurrences involving Miami police officers Jonathan Guzman, Michael Bloom, Brandon Williams, Miguel Hernandez, and Randy Cariel, Scott found himself stuck in the middle of the mess. He claimed that the cops violated his constitutional rights by conducting an unconstitutional search, wrongly arresting him and unfairly prosecuting him. Ironically, Scott had originally called the police to report that someone had stolen his automobile, but he ended up being the one who was charged with the crime. Officer Guzman, who was positioned many miles away from Scott at the time, observed a car that was driving recklessly and followed it, as stated in the police report. After eventually colliding with another vehicle, the car's driver, who was described as being a tall, heavyset black male, wearing a white tank top, ran away from the scene of the accident. Guzman, on the other hand, did not see the face of the driver. After some time, Officer Bloom ran into Scott, who informed him that his automobile had been taken from him rather than being repossessed, as Bloom had earlier proposed. When requested to fill up an affidavit regarding a stolen automobile, Scott did so without hesitation. After this, Guzman, Williams, Cariel, and Hernandez showed up to the location of the incident, and despite inconsistencies in the descriptions, Guzman was able to correctly identify Scott as the person who was fleeing the scene. Scott, who was only wearing a t-shirt and not a tank top, had high hopes that his case would lead to an improvement in the way police in Miami do their jobs. He underlined the importance of doing a reassessment of how police procedures are carried out, particularly in communities of color. In addition, Scott demanded the return of his wallet, which had been seen on the camera of a law enforcement officer, but was for some reason not included in the inventory. In spite of the fact that they had broken policies, the cops continued to work, and Scott was the only person to be apprehended for the theft of his car.